All right, I have an assembly for a chair, and I want to draw it in an exploded view with bubbles and a parts list on a drawing to uh, highlight um, the entire assembly. How do we get started doing that? Before we get started, I wanted to talk about a colleague I have at work that couldn't get laser welds working. He decided he would contain the weld in an enclosed container because he theorized that an excessive amount of oxygen was allowing the material to burn instead of weld. He was right, and he had beautiful laser welds from that point on. There is really no replacement for understanding the science behind problems. That is where my friends at Brilliant.org come in. The next time you need to understand the science behind a problem, Brilliant.org can help you out. It's great for people who have a general curiosity about the world, young professionals looking to grow their skills, or anyone wanting to refresh their knowledge. I have been enjoying their courses on astronomy quite a lot. Before I decided on engineering, I had astronomy and physics as my declared major. I'm glad I still get to keep my skills and knowledge fresh through Brilliant, even though I went in a different direction. I think there's something for everyone on here. Even 15 minutes a day can snowball into a considerable accomplishment. Learning becomes easy with the visual hands-on approach, and this is something that doesn't just build your understanding, but builds your intuition when working on complex concepts. The path from zero to hero is easy with Brilliant.org. To try everything Brilliant.org has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit Brilliant.org slash Joko Engineering Help or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So moving right along, we'll uh, grab this chair. And the first thing, uh, just as an overview, is we'll explode the assembly. And I'll run through how to do this. But this is what it looks like uh, when we do an explode. All right, so this chair is not 100% realistic, but it is realistic enough to illustrate what I'm going for. What does it look like when working with kind of a full assembly with a lot of fasteners and detail, and how do you get that onto a drawing? Uh, so this will be a combination of using Exploded Assembly Workbench and Tech Draw. Uh, so let's jump to the chair and see what we can go through. All right, fantastic. So this would be the chair as you might uh, download it from GrabCAD in the description if you wish to follow along. And uh, I have a few details to go through here, right? So I have this fastener and I built this in the A2 Plus workbench. That's my personally preferred workbench out of all of the options. And uh, if we go to edit the part, uh, first thing I want to note is that the uh, threads are off, right? We're not showing the threads. We certainly can if we switch to the uh, fasteners workbench, or in fact, if I just highlight this and say uh, thread on true, we can show the threads. And I think a lot of people like the detail of seeing the threads, but this takes a lot of graphical performance. So when you have, you know, 30 of these, 100 of these, uh, it can really get out of hand uh, when you're waiting on performance. So for that reason, I suggest hiding the thread. Anyone who's worth their salt in this industry uh, ought to kind of expect threads to be hidden for that reason. Uh, so whenever possible, I do suggest hiding the threads, even though I'm also one who really enjoys uh, high levels of detail myself. All right, uh, so we've got our threads turned off and all these fasteners. Uh, we have all of our hardware and a somewhat realistic um, construction of a chair. I think that uh, there's still some detail to add, but this is basically where I want it for the purposes of this video. Let's go into the exploded assembly workbench. And let's assume that you've that whatever you've you're assembling has already been assembled and we just want to explode it. Uh, if you're wondering how to use A2 Plus or make this assembly, I have videos on that. Remind me to put a link in the description if it is not there. Next, we'll go to the Exploded Assembly Workbench and uh, you can always go to Tools and Add-on Manager. 
and download A2 Plus or Exploded Assembly. If you do not have it, you simply click on it and then click on Install. Restart FreeCAD and you have it. Exploded Assembly is amazingly simple for what you can accomplish with it. Let's say I want to start taking the nuts off, right? First thing I'll do is hold Control and select the nuts that I want to explode. And then the last face I click, which will be here, will cover the direction of the explode. So since I selected this face, they're going to explode normal to this face out here. And for that, I simply click this Create Simple Group, and they explode outwards. I can also adjust uh, the distance if I would like. But that will be my first explode step. Now maybe I want to take this washer and explode that out. And I want to do the same. Maybe move these nuts out a little bit further. So I'll select my nuts and my washers. There. And we'll explode out again. And so you can tell in this menu down here, we have our little exploded assembly. We come to our simple group, and there's our distance. So I can change this to 40 if I wish, and they'll move 40 instead of 20, and that's whatever unit you're working in, I think. Or I think it's just millimeters, actually. That would make sense on the scale that I'm working on, so I think it's just in millimeters. Uh, I'll have to double check that. So don't take that for gospel, but I think it's just millimeters. All right, so we've got that. Uh, it really is that simple. I'll do it one more time in case anyone wants to see. Select face, face. And again, it's the last face that you click that determines the direction of your explode. So, boom. I didn't select the same face on all the nuts, but we're all going in the same direction. And again, our last face, I'll click right there actually, so we'll explode normal to that. And there we go, there's all of our washers and nuts. Uh, so I'm just going to do that for all this hardware and I'll fast forward the video so this doesn't become horribly tedious to watch. So I've gotten all of my uh, washers and nuts out. Let's work on the hardware. I'll select these four first. And notice we've gone into the chair. And of course, we want to go out of the chair. So I find my latest group and we'll say negative 50. And just clicking off, we'll see. Yeah, that's about the right distance. So let's do 50 on those, maybe 100 on the longer bolts. All right, so we got our uh, hardware out. Now we may be curious to know what does an animation of this look like, right? We can just toggle this play and play backwards buttons and there we can see what it looks like when we assemble and disassemble our part. Rather fun to watch. And then we can always instantly uh, run this by hitting these outer buttons here. Uh, let's do the legs. So we're going to go upwards on the legs for distance of 100.
Let's explode the rest of this now. The other thing that I can do if I want to edit this actually is I'll delete my simple group because I don't like that it's kind of going at the angle with this face, right? I want it to go straight. So we'll head on back to A2 plus, hit the Rubik's Cube. And that reassembles everything. And then exploded assembly. I'll try it one more time by going here, here, here. And then this very last one, I'll choose that face, which is normal to the direction that I want to go. And then I can say, how about negative 100? And that updates right there. Beautiful. I have some dowel pins that I apparently need to uh, include in that. <laughs> so maybe I'll try that one more time. Maybe it'll hold control, select my dowel pins that I forgot about. Of course, I'm using the space bar to hide and unhide these things. You can tell what's hidden, right? This back brace, which I'll highlight and click on from the tree while holding the space bar. And then this very last face that's normal to what we want to do. Boom, got that locked in. negative 100. So hopefully that's an example of editing things if you change your mind as you go along. We'll use the spacebar again. Show that. We'll uh, move this out. It's moving out a distance of 20. Maybe I'll change that to a distance of 50. Select my dowels. <coughs> and I'll make that another distance of 50 so they're equally spaced. I'll do the same thing for the other side. And then maybe we'll take the seat of the chair. And I'll start off with selecting all this back stuff. We'll take the seat and raise everything up, I don't know, 150. We'll see what looks good. It's not too bad. So if I turn it over, I can get kind of a nice view of, well, everything. If I make this 100, how does that look? I think I like that better. All right. So this is some not really an isometric, maybe trimetric, but a view that you can at least see a lot of things. And so I kind of like the view that I'm looking at right now to start my drawing. So a few things. I'll go to the A2 Plus workbench. I'll click on this parts list. Actually, I'll do a save as. All right. So we'll generate a parts list. And we get this little parts list spreadsheet down here that actually has our file names and everything um, recorded. And we'll be using that later for our drawing. So close the parts list. We'll open up TechDraw. And we'll create a, a new default page. There it is. That's my own template. <laughs> we'll. Uh, Select all of our parts here. So with all these parts selected, I simply held Control Shift and clicked the first and the last item. I will click Insert View. And this is really where not having threads on your bolts 
makes a big difference. As you can tell, this is a Xeon processor. Uh, it's a pretty fast computer that I have, and it's taking a while. And so your machine, I think it'll work. It'll just take a little while to draw, depending on how complex your assembly is. And threads do not help us in this situation of waiting. So let's see how long it takes. All right, so that's about how long it was. And we've inserted, of course, a very large um, exploded view onto our drawing. It's important to note that, you know, as I change my view now, I can, you know, click refresh or whatnot, and this view is now unaffected. So it's whatever the view is in your graphics display window. When you click this insert view button, that's what's gonna stay um, in that view. So let's take care of the size of this, right? I'll select my view here. You can also select it from the tree, which I would think I'd recommend. And we'll go to move this out of the way. Scale, maybe we'll make it 0.125 or an eighth of the size-ish. And then I'll click refresh to apply the scale change. So there we go. I think that took longer uh, than even the initial one. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and check the timer, but I think that was longer. So that's a view that we can call out a lot of parts uh, with a parts list that we have right here that we can put on the drawing. Uh, but we might want to check for some of the finer views that we have in here. So let's make a detail view, which will be up here, right there. I'll insert a detail view. So there we have our detail view. And of course, we'll have to make adjustments here because that circle is a bit small. That detail view is a bit small. And we want to adjust the position. So we'll start by so changing this radius to say about uh, 3.5 and we'll see how that pans out. All right, so we've uh, upped our radius enough. Maybe I'll make this Y three inches and see right about where that puts us. Yeah, it looks like uh, or why, if I visually caught that, moved it a little bit over horizontally. So let me try my X at, let's go 10. All right, now we're getting into that area that I want. So it looks like the magic number is maybe, I'm gonna try two on the X and 10 on the Y. All right, uh, so we've got that, but we've, we of course want our detail to be larger. So let me adjust the scale factor. Uh, let me try 0.75 and see where that takes me. Uh, that turned out big, so I changed it to 0.3. We'll see what that looks like. All right, point 0.3 is better, right? So just go to detail, select scale, point 0.3. And we'll move this into an area that looks good. Maybe down here. Uh, maybe I'll go point 0.5. Let's try that, point 0.5. Maybe we can get away with a view that big. You certainly can pretty clearly <laughs> see that might be too big. Okay, I'll change it to 0.4. I'm just going to keep fast forwarding through this anyway. All right, that, that should be totally good because then we'll have room for our parts list. So let's insert the parts list. Moving things over here to try to create some space. 
Uh, we have our parts list, and this doesn't apply to me, right? So I'm going to remove column, description, I'll leave that, supplier, remove. You can add or remove whatever you want, or columns, or rows, and then I'll start typing. I'll do all caps. All right. Um, you can add something like, you know, nut m4 or things about the nut if you want to, but I'll get rid of the file names now and just leave this right. So we go from A1 to C12. We have our chart. Uh, we'll go back to template. I'll stand on. Let's see, we're in tech draw, and I can click right here. Here it is, rather, insert spreadsheet view. And if I go back to my page now, here's my parts list. But there's kind of a problem, right? Because this is not uh, something that you're able to read. So what we have to do each time is on our sheet, instead of cell in at B2, I'm going to say C12. And that imports the entire sheet. So again, in case you missed it, I said C12, specifically because if I go back to my parts list, right, we're ending on cell C12. It's like we're playing Battleship, you know, that old game. Okay. And so now I can start bubbling things, which is kind of fun. Uh, for instance, maybe I'll select, yeah, I, I think I can select a line even. All right, I'll go with that line and hit my bubble button. So there we've got our first bubble inserted there. We can uh, edit our bubble characteristics over here, but this is actually looking pretty good to me. So two, we have our chair leg. Maybe I'll bubble that near the top. And, you know, I can just select the line that I want the uh, leader to end up on. And FreeCAD does a pretty good job of sticking a bubble on there. And there we have our two. Position that the way that we like. Let's go to three, right? That would be our back support here. And we'll choose this one as number four. There's our number four. Number five will be the back braces here. I'll bubble one. Here's my five. Six will be the dowel pin. Here's our balloon for our dowel. Seven. Bottom brace. Go to our detail view for that, and I'll maybe label it right there. There's seven. That one came up quick. Eight. Square neck bolt. Um, you know, under normal circumstances, I probably have more information here that would uh, tell me more about which bolts are which, but I think that's all right. I'll assume that our, our first square neck bolt, actually, I do have quantity. Square neck bolt is quantity 16, so that would be these guys. So I'll highlight this edge, square neck bolt. So there's our bolt. Let's check number nine. That's going to be our washer, which I can do from here. So that'll be our washer. So now I'm going to delete that. No, I'll save that for now. Ten will be our nut. I can choose any of these. Maybe I'll choose this guy. So there's 10. 
and 11 will be our longer bolt. And oh boy, I got this mixed up, right? So I labeled this as eight. Uh, there sh this should be 11, right? So we'll highlight this bubble and we'll just change the text to 11. Hopefully that helps someone somewhere if they were confused about how to do that, right? The bolts that I actually want are gonna be right here, right here, right? The ones that are very obscured in um, bubbles right now. So I, I suppose I could highlight one bolt from this view, but that wouldn't work very well for me. So I will simply go right there. You can also select one of these points, I think, but personal preference. And that should come in as number 11. I'll change that to number eight. Okay, uh, we have 11. We can stick that right there and of course change the text to eight. And so those are our balloons, that's our parts list. We can add little annotations with our annotation button if we wish and start putting text in our uh, drawing fields. But that overall is how we do the drawing. So uh, we ran through the explode we ran through how to bubble them and how to get this uh, parts list here without having to manually type up a spreadsheet. So hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.